Hey, how's it going? I'm back again. It's me, Chris. And uh, I thought being that it's Sunday, we'd take a moment and uh, talk about a few things. All right? Cool. Uh, let's see here. First of all, hey, I'd like to show you something. Uh, corn cob pipe. Come on, corn cob piper. Corey, check this out. Look what I did to my mini cob. Can you see it? I put a stem on it, longer stem. I bored out the, the dowel and put a new ferrule on it, and I put this longer bent stem on there. I think this stem's for a legend, I think. I don't know. I ordered some of these stems from Missouri Meerschaum. Um, the stems are really reasonable. You can get the stems for 50 cents and the ferrules for like a quarter or dime, something like that. I don't know. They're, they're really, really dirt cheap. So I went ahead and I modified my mini cob, made it longer. Came out pretty cool, huh? Can you guys see that? Pretty neat. I like that it's a lot longer now. And the uh, Ozark that you sent me, Corey, uh, I'm going to turn that into a mini semi-church warden. You can get those stems also through Missouri Meerschaum. Um, they're a little more expensive, though, because they got to come from Italy. The semi-church warden and the freehand, they come from Italy, so they're a little more expensive. But uh, well, when I get that one finished, we'll check it out. I'm going to make that a semi-church warden, so it'll be probably about that long. It'll be really cool. I love these little mini cobs. These are so cool for sampling or if you want a quick smoke. These are awesome. Anyway, I thought I'd show that to you. And uh, the, the tamper that uh, that Corey received, that's what that is, okay? And this is a pretty nifty little tamper. This is a 45, or 410, AC, uh, 410 shotgun shell with a 45 ACP shell on the bottom. But the 45 ACP shell comes apart and it gives, you got a poker inside. See that? Pretty neat. It fits right inside of there. So you got a poker along with your tamper. It's all pocket size. It's lightweight. It's really cool. If any of you guys are interested in any of these, let me know. Um, we can work out some barter deals. I, I love to barter. I'm all about barter. So we can work out some barter deals, maybe some tobacco trades, something like that. I'll send you guys out some tampers. These come out pretty handy. And uh, throw it in your pocket, take off with it. Whatever. It's not. It's indestructible pretty much. All right, so that's a cool tamper. Now then, I would like to premiere something. I know my last uh, take a moment, I was telling you that I was working on a pipe. Now, I've made a lot of pipes ever since I was a kid. I've been making pipes uh, from junior high all the way through high school. Even after I graduated high school, I worked in a cabinet or uh, making children's furniture. And I had access to all the machines and all kinds of exotic woods. And I'd make pipes and sell them and stuff like that. So I thought that I would show you what I've been working on. Let me, let me show you an example of some of the, the pipes that I do here. Okay. I've had this pipe for about seven years. It's stag. It's an antler. It's got a carb on the side so that you can regulate your heat. See that? It's flat. There's no The, the bowl is flat on this. It's got a stem that I attached on the end. Can you see that? It's got this nifty little handle so you can hold on to it. It's kind of cool. Little clincher. It's a cool little pipe. I've had this pipe for about seven, eight years. And you have to you have to kind of be known what you're doing when you're working with stag. Because the marrow inside the antler is soft, and it will burn. So, like this pipe here, because it goes into the marrow, the bowl and the stem go into the marrow, I had to, so after I drilled this out, I had to soak it with honey to keep it from burning out. And um, over seven years, it's burned out a little bit, but it hasn't burned out real bad. It's a great little sample pipe. I love this little pipe. It'll it'll give you about a half hour smoke. This is a pretty cool little pipe. And like I said, the carb on the side, when you're puffing on it, you can regulate your heat, which like some of the hotter tobaccos comes in really handy. Keeps you from getting your tongue all bit up. 
because then you can open it up and let some air in while you're drawing off the pipe. So I've had this for quite a while. Now then, that said, I want to show you my new one. I just finished it. Finished it a couple of days ago. Let the glue set. Let everything, you know, set into place. All right. I also wanted to make this video today to show my son because he makes pipes too. But I wanted to show my new little sitter. See there? It sits on my palm. Can you see it? It's got my mark on the side. Stag with an oak stem. And then I used a 45, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a 40 Smith & Wesson shell casing along with the little bit that I pulled off of my uh, my mini cob. See there, get a little better look at it. Pretty cool. Now the bowl is an inch deep. I drilled it an inch deep. Actually I drilled it 1.30 inches deep because in the bottom here, in order to keep the marrow from burning, I put an oak plug in the bottom of it. And then I drilled over the top of the oak plug and set it in place and put my stem in. So that way it won't burn out as fast. But you can see. You can get a good look at that. Pretty cool little sitter. It's made out of uh, what they call crown stag. This, this part right here was attached to the animal's head. And you can see it's got a little tine on it. It fits in your hand really nice. It's like a little thumb rest. It works really cool. So, anyway, I just finished this the other day, and I haven't tried it out yet. So I've got it about halfway fill with McClellan BBC. This is really a good little smoke here. I really like this. It's really yummy. Really kind of sweet. It's good. I really like that. And to go along with my new pipe, I made a little stag tamper. There again, I used a 40 Smith & Wesson shell on a tine off of an antler. And I polished it. I sanded it and I polished it. I dyed it. It's got kind of a a black accent in the nooks and the crannies and then I polished it so that way it goes together that got my little tamper my little pipe here I wanted my son to see this I didn't get a chance to show it to him he lives about an hour away from me I didn't get a chance to show him this I, th I thought he might want to like see it so uh, Let's, let's give this a try. Let's see how this does. Since I haven't tried it yet. I got my trusty old Zippo here. Like I said, this is about half full of uh, McClellan VBC. If you get a chance, try this VBC. It's pretty good stuff. Let's see how this lights. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that works pretty good. I like that. I like that BBC. That's really good. This little pipe draw is really nice. I like it. It fits really comfortable in your hand. Um, it should last for a really long time because stag... All antler is is just bone, calcium. It's just bone. The inside of the inside of the antler is marrow, where there's when it's on the animal, actually has uh, veins and blood vessels and stuff like that running through it because the antler is alive. It's part of the animal, so it's alive and it grows as the animal uh, as the year progresses on. They start growing in the spring, and by fall they're fully grown, 
and then after hunting season in the winter time, after the after the um, the ruts over, then they drop their antlers and they start all over again. So uh, let's see. When I colored this one up, I don't know if you can see the colors real well. Can you see that? When I colored this one up, I used a brown leather dye, and then I used my Dremel to to do the accents because it's there's all kinds of crevasses and little niches and stuff like that in the antler. And when the dye goes into the antler, then afterwards you hit it with a Dremel and you can bring out the accents real nice. It's real pretty. It's a nice looking thing. Like I said, it's a setter. So it'll set like a poker pipe. Pretty cool, huh? I like this. This is a neat little pipe. I don't think it'd be much of a clincher because it's kind of heavy. It's uh, got a real stout base on it. You can clench it. It'll clench. It is just kind of heavy though. Then I got my new custom-made tamper for it. And you can use the other end of the poker, brush off the dust, whatever. And with the oak plug in the bottom, it shouldn't burn out. I shouldn't have any problem with it at all, burning down through the marrow. Cool. Now I can add this into my rotation. Um, I have quite the combination of pipes. I have a couple of briar. They're, they're full church wardens. Then I have my Norwegian pear. That's a pretty nifty church warden. It's, it's from Norway, and it's got the pear bowl, and it, it's, it's pretty cool. I like that pipe. My mom got that for me for my birthday. And then I got all my cobs. I'm a cob guy. I can't help it. I like my cobs. But every once in a while, I like to have something that's a little different. And the stag works out being really cool, being different. Um, it's very aesthetic, very appeasing to the eye, in my opinion. It's very appeasing to the eye. It's durable. Um, you ain't going to scratch it. Uh, I, I, I just like the stag. I've made a lot of pipes out of stag. Uh, when I was living up in Leadville, wintertime got awful cold. And uh, in the summertime, you go through the forest and you find antler sheds. And in the wintertime, you make things out of them. Like I make knife handles. Um, I've made a lot of pipes. I used to sell uh, and buy and trade with my antler pipes all the time in Leadville. There's a lot of people that have my pipes in Leadville. Um, like I said, I'm into barter. I like to barter. I like to trade with people. Um, now, if I were to make any of these pipes for anybody, which I'm willing to, but they're going to be all different. There's none of them that are going to be the same because antler is all different. You can't standardize it. It grows on the animal, you know, so you, there's no way to standardize it. So they'll all be different and they'll all be unique. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Maybe we can work something out. Um, I've got a couple other projects that I'm just starting where I'm going to do combinations of antler and hardwood. Um, we'll see how they come out. As, as I get each one accomplished, each one finished, we'll do a, 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 a take a moment and uh, we'll premiere them. If I, if I intend on making one for someone, 
Um, of course, I'm not going to smoke it. I'll send it to you brand new. You can go ahead and break it in, do your own video on it. But uh, yeah, I'll show it off, and you can see what it's what how I'm coming along with my production. You can see my mark is a feather. See that? I'm a third Cherokee, uh, third Seminole, and I got a bunch of German splashed in there. So I, I do a lot of native stuff with feathers. I, I make my, I tie my own flies for fishing. Um, because we raise chickens and turkeys and stuff, I have an abundance of feathers around here. And uh, I, I, I tie my own flies. Um, I like stag. I like to make knives. All kinds of stuff like that. Um, just, I don't know, it's just part of me. I really like this McClellan. This is really good. The VBC. It's really nice. Um, Corey, Corn Cob Piper, he sent this to me, and I, I really am enjoying it. Uh, he got me really hooked on half and half. You ever had half and half? Half and half is old man pipe tobacco. When, when I got it from Corey, I, I hadn't smelt it in years and years and years. And Corey sent me a pouch of it. And uh, I opened that pouch, and man, it sure did take me back to when I was a little kid. I remember all the uh, old men that I used to be around. My great-grandpa smoked a cigar his whole life. He smoked a cigar. But a lot of my other uncles and stuff, they smoked pipes and stuff. And I lit up that, that half and half, and man, it was just like I was six years old again around all my aunts, aunt, uncles and, you know, all my old family members and stuff, the smell of that really took me back. And the taste of it, it I like the half and half. And, you know, it's not an expensive blend. It, it's You can get it about anywhere. It's pretty reasonable. But uh, I really like it. It's got the taste of black licorice to it. And it's got the burly and the bright. And I don't know. It's just been really addictive. I've been smoking the heck out of it. I've gone through probably an ounce and a half, almost two ounces of it since I got the pouch. I went and bought some more. I really like it, but this McClellan, I decided to use the McClellan to break in this pipe. So it's really nice. I really like it. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my new subscribers. Um, I know I only mentioned uh, the Bean Piper, Chris, in my uh, <clears throat> my other video that I made today when we were doing our study. But uh, I've had Hoosier Piper. His name's Mark. He's a pretty cool guy. He's a homesteader. He's got chickens and stuff like that. Um, be nice if we all said a prayer for him. He's been having some problems with his livestock, and he's been having some health issues. He needs some prayers, okay, guys? So throw a prayer out to Hoosier Piper. His name's Mark. Pretty nice guy. I watched a few of his videos. And, uh, hey, Mark, if you're listening, keep studying. Keep watching. Come on over. Do our studies together. Um, if you look around my channel, there's all kinds of different studies that we've done through the Bible, both New, T New Testament and Old Testament. So, you know, just follow along, whatever you want to do. Also, I would like to thank, again, the Bean Piper. I know on my other video I called him the Coffee Bean Piper, but his name is the Bean Piper. Then his name's Chris. Good name. That's a good name. Anyway, right on, Chris. Thanks for uh, subbing. Appreciate it. Um, Join in on the studies, uh, stop in and take a moment, have a pipe with me, you know, whatever, enjoy the channel. The channel's for everyone, enjoy it. Also, I had another guy, <clears throat> his name is CSI Piper. I don't have a name for him. He hasn't got any videos up on his channel. Um, as soon as he puts up a video or two, then I'll go ahead and subscribe to him. There's really no reason to subscribe to him. I, I, there's no videos to watch. He's got a couple of songs on there. But, uh, hey, CSI Piper, if you're watching, throw a video up there. Let's get to know each other. This is a great community. Uh, everybody that's on the uh, YTPC, are, they're all awesome people. Um, we trade back and forth. 
uh, we talk, we, we premiere tobaccos, we do all kinds of stuff. We all have our own individual things that we do, whether it just be tobaccos or, you know, like Chris, he, he's a master uh, coffee uh, roaster and he's got his coffees and stuff, which I think are really cool. Chris, if you're watching this, you need to get a hold of me, uh, email me or drop me a note in the bucket and let me know about how to get a hold of you with your coffees. Um, I want to try your coffees. I love coffee. Matter of fact, I got my cup sitting right here. I drink coffee and smoke pipes all the time together. Mm, love my coffee. And right now, I'm drinking um, chock full of nuts. They're pretty good coffee, coffee. Anyway, let's light this pipe up. And my Zippo's flooded. I really wanted my son Brad to see this video because I want him to see what kind of pipes I'm producing now. I want to see if he can match this. I want to see if he can make one of these, Brad. Put one of these together. This is pretty cool. And I know you got shells for the, for the flange. That works good. That little 40 Smith & Wesson shell for the flange, it fits perfectly on this piece of oak dowel. It fits absolutely perfectly. And then I just popped out the primer. I knocked it out with one of my uh, decapping tools. I reload also. Knocked it out with one of my decapping tools. And then I just took a little bit of a drill bit and I drilled it out just enough to where that this bit will fit in there. It fits in there nice and straight. Everything's pretty square on here. I love how it sits. You can set this on a desk. It's awesome. And Corey, when I make up the Ozark with the with the uh, uh, semi church warden bit on it, I'll let you know because if you want me to, I'll send you one. Okay, that way you'll have you. I know you were talking in your VR about how you'd like to have one of these with a little longer bit on it. So that got me to thinking. You got to be really careful when you're drilling this out because it, you don't want to drill through the side of it. It'll crack it. So I went really slow. I hand drilled this. I did not use a drill. I hand drilled it. And I just went one size up and I went through it. And then I went the next size up and I went through it. And I went the next size up and I went through it until this bit started to fit. And then as soon as it started to fit, then I fit the ferrule on there and I slipped it in. And it was just a little bit loose until I smoked a bowl through it. And then once I smoked the bowl through it, it tightened right up. So this is really cool. I really am, I'm really happy about this because I don't like that little short bit, that little nose warmer. Yeah. I like something with a little longer bit. That way the smoke's got a chance to cool. So this came out really cool. And this little pipe smokes really good. It's not hot. Fits in my hand really nice. A little thumb rest, or you can right hand it. This is a cool little pipe. I like this. And like I said, the colors, they can vary because it just depends on what kind of dye I use. Um, I've got all different kinds of leather dye. Um, Old English, wood polish, any of that kind of stuff will dye this. I've used um, crushed up old nasty cigars, uh, put them in a mason jar full of water, dropped the antler in there for 48 hours, pulled it out, washed it all off, and it takes a hue of the tobacco color. That's kind of cool. I made some knife handles like that. Um, I've used coffee grounds take old coffee grounds and pour them into a jar and put some hot water in there and drop them in there. Coffee grounds work really cool. Um, you got to let it dry out for a few days after that because the marrow gets kind of soggy. 
you don't want to drill it out with the marrow being soggy. You can make knife blade or knife handles that way because that way you, the, the marrow acts as a natural cement and you can put the knife handle, you fit it right into the stag and then you let it sit and dry and the, the marrow is like cement and it just absolutely glues to the knife blade. Works really cool. I love using stag. Stag's a neat thing. God provided it for us provided the animals for us and they're for our use they're for us to hunt they're for us to eat and to enjoy and every part of them you shouldn't waste anything I use the teeth um, elk have the only ivory on the North American continent and it's their eye teeth they're made out of ivory they're called whistlers and they're real ivory and I use those. Um, I've used them for jewelry. I've got a hat band on my hunting hat, <clears throat> my, my cowboy hat that I use for hunting. It's leather. I've got a hat band with all my little trophies from all the elks that, I, uh, that I've uh, bagged. I've got a whistler from each one on my hat. Talk about getting some looks. <laughs> Walk into a bar with that on. <laughs> Not to mention a sidearm because you're hunting and all that. Yeah, yeah, it gets, some, get, it gets noticed. I like stuff that gets noticed. These get noticed in public. I have people all the time ask me, what is that? Are you using a bullet to tamp your pipe? No, it's just a shotgun shell that I made an insert for, which has got a poker on it. And the poker is really cool. It's just a nail. It's indestructible. What are you going to do? How are you going to break it? But uh, it's real handy, and it's pocket size. It just drops right in your top shirt pocket, and geez, you can hardly even tell it's there. And it's, it doesn't burn. It, it gets a little black on the brass, but besides that, it's really handy. I really like this. Great little tool. But this pipe has its own, has its own custom tamper, and it works really cool. It's just the right size. Let's see. If you like more than just an inch deep bowl, I can make them as, as deep as you want. I, might, I myself prefer a little more shallow bowl. Um, that way the tobacco doesn't get stale at the bottom and nasty. And you end up wasting tobacco that way because I don't know about you, but when I get to the bottom of the bowl and it tastes like, like an outhouse, I'm not going to soldier through that. And to me, that's a waste. So I'd rather go with a little more shallow bowl. Not only that, but when you make the bowl a little more shallow and you got all this down below here, you don't have to worry about it burning through. Even though I've got an oak plug in there, it's still, this is this pipe will last me by the rest of my life. Jason Dagner's also got a lot of really good uh, suggestions for pipes. I've been watching him every once in a while, the way that he modifies um, corn cob pipes, and he does his own little tweak on things, and he, he does all kinds of stuff. And I like watching him because he, he's very unique with what he does, and he's, he's got a good eye for designs, really good eye. I love his Dagner, uh, the, the poker pipe that he did with Missouri Meerschaum. That is a cool pipe. So if you get a chance, new guys to the UP, sorry, to the UTPC, the new guys, go check him out too. Go check out the Smoke and Dagners. They, they've got a pretty good YouTube channel too. Everybody, everybody on the YTPC is awesome. There's so many guys that I enjoy watching. Everybody's got information. Um, you got Eddie Gray with the Pipe Nook. Eddie's got all kinds of stuff. He's also got tobacco. If you guys are looking for a new distributor, because I know PNC is a mess. If you're looking for somebody new to order your tobacco from, get a hold of Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook, because he's selling tobacco now, too. Um, Mutton Chop, he's awesome to listen to. He's got great stories. 
and uh, he's got some good information on stuff. And I, I'd like to listen to him play his guitar. And Mutton Chop's really cool too. His name's also Chris. All right. Well, I think I'm going to sit here and I'm going to enjoy my new pipe. Um, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with my design. I'm really happy with the way it smokes. I I'm just tickled. This came out really cool. And if anybody's interested, let me know. Maybe we can work something out. I'll make you one of your own. They're all unique. They're all different. And they're all... Nobody's going to have one like it. All right? All right, gang. Well, thanks again for subscribing to my channel. Um, if anybody has any questions about anything, the Bible studies, uh, pipes, tobaccos, I'm not an expert on tobaccos by any means at all. Um, I'm just learning right along with the rest of you. I've been smoking since I was a little kid, but, you know, there's so much variety nowadays. It's awesome. It's, it's so cool. There's so much variety. So I'm really learning. A good one to learn from is uh, Corn Cob Piper, Corey. He knows a lot about tobaccos. So if you're if you're curious about stuff, you know, watch his videos because he'll go through and he'll explain stuff to you. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you all day. Enjoy your pipe. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family. Enjoy life. All right? God bless. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you soon.